it is Faded Love Vintage. I'm Colleen and I am outsourcing today. So I am shopping for vintage and antiques. I stopped today in Brewerton, New York and I'm going into a shop called On the Farm Antiques. Um, it is a co-op kind of place where um, basically they rent out the building and then they rent the booths out. So and I'm gonna ask permission to film and go from there. I'll see you guys in there. Okay, so on the first booth, she has some beautiful things, um, but everything is right at retail. Um, so I can't really make much money on them. But I did notice these art glass tumbler glasses. They're really neat. Um, with polka dots, but I really wasn't sure of the maker. I know there is a Murano glass maker that does similar glasses, but these glasses looked actually a little too regular and uniform to be that maker. <laughs> so moving on, and I saw it. <laughs> We're still in the same booth. So I went over and took a peek. It is a Fenton Persian medallion satin glass in the blue fairy lamp. Now in perfect condition, these don't actually run a whole lot more than this. And with the chip, uh, here I am looking to see how bad the chip is. It's pretty bad. Um, and the inserts are actually harder to find than the fairy lamps themselves. So it really kind of was tragic that it was a Fenton insert that was damaged. And so I left the fairy light behind, unfortunately, because there just wasn't a whole lot of room on it, especially with the damaged insert. And I saw this teacup and I got excited. I was thinking that it was something else and it was just a left in chintz, so I left it behind. <laughs> This guy was really neat. He looked super familiar, and I thought he was really cute. But he was just a little chipped up, which was just a little too chipped up for me. So I left him behind. I saw this Murano bowl for 25. Honestly, that was a little too high for me price-wise. I have a hard time selling Murano bowls. I don't know why, but I do. <laughs> and this was pretty interesting. I didn't recognize it at first, but I just thought it was kind of a neat piece of glass. And then kind of looking around at it, I noticed the sticker that says Costa Boda. And that is a really, it's a nice high-end glass. So I decided to pick it up. And this vase was very nice, um, beautiful colors. I love these very deco, very vibrant colors. So I decided to take that for 10. I saw some more Murano, so I had to take a peek. <laughs> This, I believe, is what's considered a fruity tutti, or tutti fruity, sorry, tutti fruity bowl. But I just, it looked a little messy to me, and eh, it had a few imperfections, and I just really wasn't feeling it. So I decided to put it back. Um, if it's there next time, I might grab it. But like I said, I have a hard time selling Morano bowls. I don't know why. I list them, and they just don't move. And I saw this bowl and I just, oh, the colors. But I thought it was just a little dirty. When I pick it up, you can see some cloudiness to it. I thought it just needed a good scrub. It had, was a little scratched up, but not a big deal. And that was a good price that I was happy with, so I decided to take it. Uh, that's some Lucite Grapes on Driftwood. Um, at $15, they're not a whole lot more than that. Okay, so I spent $32 in there today. Um, <laughs> I'm still kind of trying to like slowly ease myself into it. Um, I'm not going like full bore 
until I really kind of settled in and had made a, a bit of a dent on my um, unlisted inventory. Um, but I've been just itching to get out and shop because <laughs> it's been months. Um, so I picked up three things. I spent $32. I grabbed that gorgeous um, blue and pink Murano bowl. I have a feeling it might be Barbini, um, but I'll have to do some research on it. It's absolutely gorgeous, Submerso, uh, which is those two tones like into each other, but not mixed. Um, I also grabbed that gorgeous uh, Japanese vase um, with the really intense green on it. It's just the colors were fantastic and the price was right. Um, I also did grab that Costa Boda. Um, I'm not sure if it's a vase or a votive holder. Um, but when I did a quick, quick search online, I could find the line it was from, but I couldn't find that piece. So for the price, I grabbed it to take a chance and see where it goes, if nothing else. You pay to learn. <laughs> so we'll find out if it paid off or if I learned a lesson. <laughs> um, so on to the next place and I'll see you there. What is happening? Is this a thing? I don't know. Mm. All right. So I just finished up in a little shop called, um, Lost Key Antiques, which is right around the corner from on the farm. I didn't get any footage in there, um, but I did grab a couple of things. I spent $40. I haven't decided if I'm keeping <laughs> this or not, but I did buy this beautiful bottle. And uh, it does have a stopper. It is ground. It's just, it's so pretty that I just... I had to have it if I sell it and make a profit fantastic if I keep it for myself that's, that might happen <laughs> um, and then I also bought this kind of freeform crystal bulldog paperweight He's pretty cool. He is marked. I don't recognize the mark, but it was labeled a Gorham. And when I looked him up under Gorham, he, I could not find him. Um, so on a hunch, I nabbed him just because he's so heavy and he's so well made. And honestly, his face is kind of hilarious. <laughs> so I'm going to do some more research and see what goes from there. If nothing else, I'll get my money back on him and hopefully make a profit. So I think that does it for shopping today. Just a little day of it. Um, I have to go grocery shopping and then head to my nephew's birthday party. So I will see you guys later. Bye. All right, so I am upstairs in my office today trying to kind of get things situated and get things ready to get back on track um, with listing and sourcing and organizing and all that fun stuff. So let me see where, let me show you where I'm at. So this is my office. <laughs> this, it's not a super big room. I actually have you like zoomed out right now, but you can see it's completely in disarray. Uh, the previous owner actually had this set up as a sewing quilting craft room. That desk is built in. There's also a built in headboard over there in the corner too. So the desk is amazing and I like the headboard, but there's like zero use for it. So I'm going to try and just use it as a shelf. So I, Hopefully don't have to rip it out, especially think, since I think um, the wall was wallpapered around it, <laughs> not under it. <laughs> so, but as you can see, there's quite a bit of like unlisted inventory, unlisted inventory, unlisted inventory there, there. Um, that's actually listed. Those that over there is not. 
that's like most of that I'm keeping and there's a few things like the frog and the viking candy dish that I'm like yeah I think I want to keep that because I'm nothing's uh, terrifying to ship <laughs> but all right so this is where I'm starting that's actually relatively organized but that's a ceramic Christmas tree that needs to get listed so my shipping area is actually pretty decent. I'm kind of happy with that right now. I just have to figure out what I'm going to do with the cricket because that doesn't live there. So, I'll let you know. Hi, so it's the next day. I got quite a bit done. I got my light box set up. And so I am ready to go for creating new listings. But let me show you what I got done in here. All right, I know it doesn't look that much different, but <laughs> I have cleared out a lot in this corner. So it's actually not in too bad a shape right now. Um, it is functional enough to where I can start creating listings again and get my uh, eBay store back up and running. Um, I have found some really cool things like as I'm going through and I just wanted to show you guys. All right, so <laughs> there are these totes that are just, oh, look at them, they're fantastic. Now, uh, the lady we purchased the house from loves her baskets. She left <laughs> so many baskets behind. I have to go through and sort them all. But uh, in the basement, in the storage room, which I haven't finished going through yet either, like I'm talking like, oh, like maybe a hundred baskets. It's she really likes baskets but i'm really loving it because i like baskets too i'm just not that intense like oh look at this it's so cute like it's got a little oh there's something in it oh yarn there's yarn in it and a screw <laughs> and there's another one that's lined oh that's adorable oh i love it their little purses. Oh, it is broken though. Ooh, that's a shame. But it's still, oh, it's so cute. And there's these big ones. Oh man, and they have these little rope handles. Oh, these are nice. I think I wanna show you what's in that Pringles box. So, I know you guys whew, have seen these, but I also do have a box of Hasbro Weebles. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. And I also have these fantastic lion salt and pepper shakers. There's no chips, no cracks from what I remember. Looks like there's just a little bit of a rub mark right there. There's this little carnival glass piece. See, this I picked up at a garage sale last year that I didn't get on film. It's a whole piece. I got some. Let's see, what can I take out? Right, so I have this picture does have some damage on it and actually I think that's worse than what it was before I moved oops um let me see you guys have seen these carnal glass pieces here from that goodwill trip on the last video or not the last video but maybe a couple of videos ago and then I also have I picked this up last year and I just haven't gotten around to listing it. This is a, um, I believe it's a car vase. Because, or a carriage vase. Because uh, you can see there's an indent in the glass right there. Where when it would sit in the metal holder, there's a little screw to keep it secure. And then you put some water in it and some flowers. And I also have some barrel mugs. Not 100% sure on the manufacturer of these. 
Um, I'll have to do some research because from what I understand, McCoy is a good contender, but McCoy isn't the only option. Let's see, then I have a tiny little teapot made out of brass. This is dollhouse sized. And then there's this black milk glass planter. Now this one, I've looked at it in light and it's not, I can't see amethyst. So that's why I'm saying black milk glass. Ooh, I do want to show you this. Look at that. It's so pretty. This is called, um, oh, the brand escapes me. But the pattern is called La Femme. Um, I want to say Anchor Hawking, but I know I'm completely, I might be completely wrong on that. Uh, it's one of the usual contenders, either Anchor Hawking, um, uh, again, names, words, uh, <laughs> escape me, mommy brain. Um, but Libby, maybe, I think it might be Libby. I think it's Libby. I'm, I'll put it on the screen if I'm wrong, <laughs> but got to list you. All right. So it's the next day. <laughs> I've been doing this in kind of fits and spurts because I have toddlers. So when my father-in-law comes over and says, I want to give the boys a ride while I plow my driveway. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll get them. I'll get them dressed for you. I then take that 45 minutes to an hour and do things that are not child, um, that I don't need children to supervise me, <laughs> uh, which includes working, well, it includes working on my office where there's a lot of breakable stuff. <laughs> and um, typically when my husband's home at nights and uh, he can keep an eye on the boys and keep them distracted while I'm up here doing what I need to do. Um, I, at that point, it's the end of the day. I have a hard time focusing and all I can do is put my orders out and get them ready for the post office the next day and not think about what I'm going to do and organize. <laughs> my brain doesn't work like that. So I'm getting it done in fits and spurts. All right, let's see what okay, I've done. So you saw that I cleaned out that corner. And look at the, there's a built-in bookshelf there. I'm going to put some reference books on. And I have those drawers organized. Um, the top two, I'm going to put, like, um, kind of pictures and keepsakes and things for the boys over the years. So the top one's Henry and the middle one's Frankie. And the bottom one, I haven't figured out what I'm going to put in there yet. Um, but I put this little table over here. Look, I have an empty tote. <laughs> now I just have those to empty. That is all clear glass and things that just don't photograph well against a light gray background. Um, <clears throat> and look, I found my backgrounds <laughs> for my light box. Um, so I'm just kind of putting them in a pile uh, to get them ready for when I can photograph them with the correct backdrop. Because I only have one light box. But did want to show you guys something really quick. So, not this. While really cute, um, this is a Christmas ornament. Ooh, focus on this thing. This is a Christmas ornament. It's actually really beautiful. It's in fantastic shape. But, oh, this is cool too. It's upside down, but it's cool. Yeah. This is... Some, I wouldn't necessarily call it tramp art, but um, it's folk art. It's a little shelf in the shape of a teapot. And it has a little mirror and a little shelf. And these are all furniture appliques. So here, here, here. And these are all um, screw buttons or the little buttons of wood that you put over screw holes to hide them. And somebody did this cute little shelf with it. 
So I don't necessarily agree that it's tramp art, but it's definitely a folk art piece. And it's, it seems to be from the tramp art era, um, sometime between the 20s and the 50s. Uh, so like World War, between war, war, between wars and World War II era, like 1940s, I would have pegged this at, but we'll see. But what I wanted to show you is actually this fantastic little shelf. And that's a Mexican pottery trinket box. Isn't that fantastic? Love it. But this was actually hanging in the master bedroom when we moved in. Isn't that a fantastic little shelf? It's not really my aesthetic, but it's a great shape with the rattan, the caning, very boho, very in right now. People love this stuff. I mean, <laughs> I love it too, but I just, my interior decorating goes a little bit different. Less boho and more just, well, like a mid-century eclectic mix. Um, let me see, that's a box of Christmas. There's more Christmas back there. That's, I think, about 90% Christmas, I'll have to go through that box. I do not remember what's in there. That actually, I believe, was part of my last shopping trip. Not you, you've been in there forever. And not you. But you, you, and you were all in my last shopping trip. So stuff I need to sort out. Oh, this is something. I was going through my stuff, and I'm like, where did this thing come from? It is Freshwater Dwellers <laughs> set in acrylic. It is a numbered, it has a number on it, so I'm thinking it's a specimen piece meant for a scientific study. But there's some more cool stuff in here. Like this horse. So cool. Um, I picked it up because it reminded me of a McCoy stretch horse. But it's unmarked. And unfortunately it does have a chip. Or a crack. And a chip. And that's why I haven't listed it yet. Oh, there's another chip. But it was just too cool. Couldn't leave it behind. And then there's some more stuff, like you've seen that tin, and there's a few things back there, and I'm going to go through, but I feel like it kind of looks worse, but I am making progress. Hi! So, <laughs> it's a few days later, again, but I did make some major progress, so let me show you what I did in the office. There we go, I'll give you a bit of a wide lens perspective. Or an after. It's not its final form, but we're getting there. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me while I try to get my eBay and uh, part-time reselling business back in order. So, and on my shopping trip, you guys saw that. <laughs> Finally got out shopping. So, comment, subscribe uh, if you want to join me on my next adventure and I will see you guys then. Bye.